Hi, Cigar Box guitar enthusiasts. This is Dr. Liza Sahidal from Psyche Electroacoustic Opera Company. Welcome to my channel. So I built this beautiful, rustic cigar box guitar, and I chose to install a piezo pickup into the instrument because I wanted to capture the rich and gritty sound that only a cigar box resonator could provide. The magnetic pickups can't do that, by the way, because the audio is induced between the metal strings and the pickup, and your cigar box wouldn't contribute to the sound of the instrument when plugged in. So piezo pickups are great at converting sound traveling through solid surfaces into electrical signals that are analogous to those sounds. However, with a piezo pickup, I knew that if I wanted to hear the true sound from my CBG through an amp or send good sound to an effects pedal, I would need a piezo preamp to fix the high impedance issues of my piezo. And without a piezo preamp, usable bass will be filtered out of my signal and I'd have to deal with low level issues paired with occasional level spikes. Really annoying. So for those of you who are wondering, yes, you do need a piezo preamp if you want your CBG with piezo pickup to sound good through anything. Originally, I sourced a tiny $3 preamp that I soldered straight onto my piezo pickup, and sadly, it sounded like crap. Um, it was extremely noisy, compressed my sound, and took away all of the bass from my CBG, which is not what a piezo preamp is supposed to do. So after that disappointment, I considered purchasing a preamp with a built-in EQ on Amazon, but decided against it because I didn't want to bore a hole inside of my CBG to install a bulky acoustic guitar preamp, which would make my instrument heavier and uh, cut into the resonance of my CBG when I played it acoustically, and I didn't want to buy an expensive power DI or external acoustic guitar preamp, so I opted for something DIY. I scoured the internet and found the piezo preamp circuit that has been featured in Collins Lab and HomemadeCircuits.com, and I've linked to both resources in the video description box, so definitely check them out. So according to my research, this circuit has four sections going from left to right. In the first section, the 3.3 mega ohm resistor is the key component, and it helps to properly bleed or discharge the piezo like a capacitor, so that all the frequencies transduced by the piezo are preserved. Then this well-preserved signal is sent into the next important component, the MPF-102 transistor. The transistor's gate, which is kind of like a key input, acts on the source of the transistor, which is fed by the DC power from the 9-volt battery. The voltage variations from the piezo reshape the more powerful signal from the battery. Then the amped up signal is sent through a 10 microfarad polarized capacitor, which blocks the DC and only allows AC to pass to the output jack of the piezo preamp. Then the section of the parallel resistors lowers the output impedance of the preamp circuit. The result of all of these sections working together is a rich and strong signal with the right output impedance for the inputs of modern audio equipment such as amps, effects pedals, and audio interfaces. Little note, the aforementioned is an oversimplified breakdown, so please read the source material in the video description box if you'd like to dissect the circuit further. So I began the build by making a list of all of the components and ordering them online. Here's what you'll need. You'll need two female TS connectors, one for the input and another for the output of your circuit. You're gonna need a 3.3 mega ohm resistor, a 1.5 kilo ohm resistor, a 560 ohm resistor, a 220 kilo ohm resistor, your MPF-102 transistor, a 4.7 microfarad polarized electrolytic capacitor, and a 10 microfarad polarized electrolytic capacitor. You'll also need a 9 volt battery and a simple rocker switch. I was able to purchase all of the resistors and polarized electrolytic capacitors on Amazon. However, I had to go to eBay for the MPF-102 transistor. Make sure that your MPF-102 comes with a spec sheet telling you which pins correspond to source, gate, and drain. Okay, so once I had all of my components, I wanted to be a hero and find my own circuit configuration using a breadboard, although the article from the homemadecircuits.com provided a perfectly simple circuit layout. 
So for days, I built and rebuilt my circuit on the breadboard, trying to figure out why my audio was weak, noisy, and distorted. Embarrassingly, I realized that I was trying to breadboard powered audio circuitry on a cheap breadboard with aluminum or steel contacts. I'm still embarrassed by this oversight. Take it from me, cheap breadboards are great for most Arduino projects, but are not conductive enough for audio applications. For audio stuff, you need more expensive breadboards with copper or brass contacts. So I abandoned my breadboarding pursuit for now and turned to the PVC design in the homemadecircuits.com article. I don't own a PVC printer, but the circuit layout is simple. I was able to recreate the PVC layout on a piece of scrap wood with copper tape. The scrap wood was cut to fit inside a wooden box I got from my local dollar store, which would be my preamps enclosure. Then I reproduced the PVC conductive lanes using some copper tape. Okay, so let's recreate this PCB layout. You'll notice that there are seven individual lanes in this PCB layout, but in order to reproduce the layout, you're going to have to use more than seven strips of copper tape. I reproduced every lane in segments and I made sure to one, apply my copper tape as smoothly as possible, and two, label the location of component conductors as I went. You'll also want to make sure that your overlapping segments are making good contact with each other. Be extra careful with labeling the transistor's lanes and when labeling the location of your capacitor's positive and negative leads. The PCB layout from homemadecircuits.com labels the positive lead location with a plus sign. Keep in mind that the positive conductors on your polarized electrolytic capacitors are the long leads and the negative conductors are the short leads. Okay, so we're almost done with this. As you wrap up your circuit layout, make sure that your copper is well adhered to the board and that there are no unintentional overlaps. Now take a moment to compare your DIY PCB with the original PCB from homemadecircuits.com. If everything checks out, then you are ready to check your lanes for continuity with a multimeter. Checking for continuity will ensure that your DIY PCB lanes are conductive from start to finish. To select continuity mode on your digital multimeter, turn your knob to the symbol that looks like a speaker. When your red and black leads touch, your multimeter should beep, indicating continuity. Now place your red lead on one side of a lane and the black lead on the opposite side of the same lane. If your multimeter beeps, then that lane is ready to be soldered onto. If a lane fails to produce a beep, then reapply copper tape to that lane, paying special attention to the areas where overlaps occur. Then check for continuity again. You'll be ready to solder components onto your board when all of your lanes have continuity. Okay, now it's time to get soldering. You'll need flux, 6040 solder, and tweezers. I like to heat my soldering iron to about 700 degrees Fahrenheit so that the solder flows well. And at that temp, however, you'll want to be quick with your soldering so that you do not burn or oxidize the copper tape and disturb the adhesive on its underside. Applying flux to the copper tape will help the solder stick to the copper more quickly. I started by prepping soldering points for the MPF-102 transistor. I applied a small bead of solder to the points on the board and then applied flux and a bit of solder to the transistor's leads. Line up the right leads with the right lanes on the board. Now all that's left to do is hold the transistor over the solder points and bring the iron down on the points until the transistor is in place. I prepped and installed all of the other components in the same manner with the addition of one step. Since all other components straddled lanes, I pre-measured the distance of the leads on the board before applying my solder points. The next component I installed was the 10 microfarad capacitor. And then I tackled all of the resistors and then installed the final capacitor. Make sure that your capacitor's positive and negative leads are soldered onto the corresponding points on the board. After that, I put together my input and output jacks and I soldered the leads onto the input and output areas of the board. Then I needed to install a toggle switch onto the battery. 
this is how to properly install a switch onto a battery. I ran out of 9 volt battery clips, so I'm using alligator clips in this demo instead. Red is positive and black is negative. What you want to do is interrupt the flow of either the positive or negative side of the battery leads. I'm going to interrupt the positive side and I'm making sure that my switch is in the off position before I make the connection. Now, I'm attaching one of the switch's leads to my battery's positive lead. In this case, the switch's available lead gets soldered onto the positive power supply point on the board, and the negative battery lead gets soldered onto the negative power supply point on the board. Be doubly sure that you install the switch correctly. If you don't, your battery will become very hot, very fast, when you connect it to your circuit and could explode. Take it from someone who's made this error and almost got burned. Double check your switch before you connect it to anything. After your battery has properly donned the switch, then solder the battery leads onto the board. Make sure that your switch is in the off position before you do this. Now, before you plug into this preamp, you need to conduct the battery test. Flip the switch on and then wait a few seconds. If your battery or any of your components get warm or hot, turn it off immediately. This means that you've probably installed a component incorrectly in your circuit. Once your circuit passes the battery test, meaning that nothing gets warm or hot, then it's time to test your piezo preamp. You'll have trouble testing your preamp circuit unless it dons an enclosure. I drilled three holes into my dollar store wooden box, one for the input jack, a second for the output jack, and a third for the battery's rocker switch. Then I had a little fun wood burning my box to make it match with the rustic look of my cigar box guitar. After wood burning, I applied some stain and polyurethane to beautify it and protect it further. Once my stain and poly dried, I carefully placed my circuit inside the box and installed the input jack, output jack, and switch. Okay, we're done. So now I can plug my cigar box guitar into my piezo preamp. I plugged my CBG into my piezo preamp's input and sent the output into my audio interface, then tested my preamp on two electric guitar effects pedals. Here are the results. Take a look at my test recordings. Both of these were made with the same input gain in my audio interface, but as you can see, the recording labeled preamp produced a much stronger signal. Now, let's compare the two signals by ear. I recommend that you pop on some headphones or turn on your good speakers to hear the difference between these recordings. This recording was made without my piezo preamp. My CBG was plugged directly into my audio interface. This recording was made with my piezo preamp. My CBG was plugged into my preamp, and then my preamp was plugged into my audio interface. The preamp signal was stronger and brought out the bass of my CBG. If you turn up the volume on your headphones or speakers, you can hear that the preamp does produce a low-level hum. But, in my opinion, the benefits of this preamp outweigh this one flaw. Now we're ready to see how my CBG with preamp performed through two popular electric guitar effects pedals. The first test was between my CBG with preamp through the Zoom G1X4 multi-effects processor.
heard, my CBG with DIY piezo preamp sounded great through the Zoom. Now, let's hear my CBG with preamp through the holy grail of one-man band harmonization, the TC Helicon Play Electric. I'm sitting here playing guitar on a three-string, yeah. And if I did it all like it, he can go home right now. So as you heard, the Play Electric had problems with my buffered piezo signal. My process CBG sounded horrible through the Play Electric's guitar effects, but the vocal effects sounded good. So for those of you who want to go on stage with your CBG and benefit from the vocal effects on the Play Electric, here's a setup that allows you to send pitch info from your CBG into your Play Electric for vocal effects, but bypass the guitar effects and allow you to send an unprocessed CBG signal to another Guitar effects pedal. Guitar effects on the TC Helicon don't sound so great. So I would have Cigar Box Guitar go through my preamp, preamp go into the guitar in on the TC Helicon, bypass the TC Helicon's guitar effects by going out the guitar through. TC Helicon would be outputting at this point our vocal effects. Guitar through sent into the Zoom, and this setup works. <laughs> So what do I think about this preamp? Well, the unit price is relatively inexpensive. When I costed out the price of every individual component, copper tape and wooden box enclosure, it cost me about $11 to build this preamp, which is not bad considering the price of preamps sold online. As you heard in my demo clips, it does hum a little, but it's barely apparent when I'm playing. It does preserve the rich signal from my CBG and it passes it on at a good level for my audio interface, effects pedals and amps. So all in all, I'd be happy to go on stage with this piezo preamp and would be happy to use it to record my CBG in my studio direct. So with a little prep work during tracking, I can clean out the hum with any audio cleanup plugin before mixing. Would I recommend this build to other piezo CBG enthusiasts? The answer is yes, I would. But I encourage you to go back and listen to my recordings, let your ears draw their own conclusions about this piezo preamp circuit. So I hope you found this video to be informative, inspiring, and entertaining. Check out the audio, stage lighting, multimedia, and music tech tutorials on this channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Chaito.